Hello, class, and welcome to the Unit 2 review. So first and foremost, I have a professor has recorded exam grades for 20 students in her class, but one of the grades is no longer readable. If the mean score in the exam was 84, and the mean of the 19 readable scores is 85, we first want to know what is the value of this unreadable score. So let us call a variable x this unreadable score. And we need to find the value of the 19, um, of the 19 readable scores. So to find those um, readable scores, we're just going to take the values of 85 and multiply that by 19. which will give us a value of 1,615. So to find the score that is unreadable, well, we would set up our algebraic equation of x, the unreadable score, plus the readable score sum of 1,615. Divide that by 20 for 20 total students, and that average was an 84 in our case. So for this, we would take our value of 20, multiply that by 84. So we would get X plus 1,615 is going to be equal to 1,680. And then when we subtract by that 1,615, our unreadable score is going to have a value here of 65, which drops the average a little bit in this particular case. So 65 would then be the unreadable score for this first particular question. For the second, I have a man surveyed a sample of 36 high school students and asked, how many days in the past week have you consumed an alcoholic beverage? And the results of this survey are on this table. Using the results, use these results to answer parts A through E. So as you can imagine, a longer-ish question. But they first want to know, is the data discrete or continuous? Look into the right. All those values are all whole numbers. And the highest is five, lowest is zero. So the data here is discrete. OK. So we are first going to want to draw a histogram of this data. So let me open this up in stack crunch so we can see it. Okay. Oh, data is here on the left. I'm going to go to graph, histogram. I'm going to select our one variable. And we are just going to give this a starting value of zero and a width of one, just to make those bars touch in this case. Hitting compute will give us this graph here on the right. And we first want to know what is the shape of this particular graph. So judging by the fact that we have a ton of data there on the left, and it kind of tails off to the right. This would be an example of a distribution where it is skewed right. And then based on this shape, we want to know, do we expect the mean to be more than, equal to, or less than the median? 
Since it's skewed right, that means the mean should be pulled further to the right. So because of that, the mean should be greater than the median. Greater than the median in our case. And then of course, based on that idea, we want the mean and median rounded to two decimal points. So let us look at that. So based upon our estimate, let us go to now stat, summary stats, columns. We just have a one column and we want the mean and we want the median. So let me quickly select that. Nope, not all those. Mean and median. There we go. That would then give us a mean, a median here of one, exactly, and a mean of zero point. Um, to round to two dust points, that'll be 0 0.81 in our case. So let us write that out. So the mean in our case is going to be, based on this um, big symbol mu, 0 0.81 for the mean, and the median is exactly one. So we want to know what does this tell us, right? This means that the prediction was incorrect. Because the mean is less than the median. Right, and we know that to be true since we just calculated it. Furthermore, we want to know, do we believe that this survey suffers from bias? If so, what type and why? So for this, this would be, yes, the survey suffers from response bias. Survey suffers from response bias. Because it would be difficult It would be difficult to achieve truthful responses. Achieve truthful responses to this question. responses to this type of question type of question unless the identity of the respondents identity of the respondents is anonymous
unless the identity of the respondents is anonymous. Oh, I knew that. Moving way along. We have here for question three, followed by a bunch of questions. Uh, so question three, Ethan and Drew went on a 10 day fishing trip. The number of smallmouth bass caught and released by the two boys each day is shown in this data table to the right. We want to complete parts A through D. So first, we want to find the population mean and range for the number of smallmouth bass caught per day by each fisherman. And we don't want to round. Uh, and then we have an additional question attached there, which we shall answer uh, when we get to it. So. Let me first get our data. This lovely looking table. And let me just clear this away. Okay. So here's Ethan and Drew. We first wanted the mean and the range. Population mean and range. So stats, summary stats, columns. We want it for both boys, the mean and the range. Both of those values for both boys is 10 and 18, respectively, for the mean and range. Let's talk about that, shall we? So the mean. for both boys is 10, uh, excuse me, the mean for both boys is 18, the range for both boys is 10. So we space it this way. Ethan, his mean was 18, his range was 10. For Drew, his mean was also 18 and his range is 10. So we want to know, do these values indicate any differences between the two fishermen's catches per day? In this case, this will be, you know, simply a no, right? No. Both Ethan and Drew. No, both Ethan and Drew have a similar Similar population mean and range. So again, as we have talked about previously, the range is the simplest me measure of this dispersion, which you know claims that uh, they both have the same ranges. But of course, let us face it, our next question here. Um, we want to draw a dot plot for Ethan and for Drew. Which fisherman seems to be more consistent, right? Since we are going to have now this pictorial reference, um, it's naturally going to show us what's going on with this data. So we're doing a dot plot. Graph, dot plot, and I'll do both boys at the same time. And then we're going to hit compute. And we could see kind of what's going on down here, right? Drew has kind of two, let's just say clusters of data, right? A little bit here on the left, a bit more here on the right. Ethan though has one main cluster, right? And then one, um, in this case, outlier, we could call it in our case, uh, for Ethan here all the way at the end. That means even though the two have the same range, I mean, how dispersed they are is a little bit varied in this case, right? So let us talk about that. So this dot plot shows that for which fisherman seems more consistent, 
to answer that, that would be that Ethan seems more consistent. Since more of his observations are clustered together. Okay. Then we want the population standard deviation for the number of smallmouth bass caught per day by each fisherman, rounded to one decimal place as needed. And then we have ourselves a lovely question to ask about that. So let us first go to do this calculation. So let me keep both of these up here so we can uh, also see what's going on with this. So we just want the uh, stat, summary of stats columns for Ethan and Drew. And we had indicated that we want the population standard deviation. Not this one, right? This was the sample standard deviation. We want the population all the way down here, unadjusted standard deviation. And compute gives us this. Now we have two wildly different numbers. Well, not that wild. By comparison, the range had two values the same. Here we have two different values, right? Ethan's is uh, about 4.8, which kind of makes sense, right? His are more clustered. And Drew's is a bit spaced further out, 7.9 in this case. In order to show that indeed, Ethan's is less dispersed than Drew's. But let us make note of this. So for Ethan, his population standard deviation was 4.8, rounded to one decimal point. And Drew's also rounded to one decimal point was 7.9. So then, to uh, answer our question here, do these values present a different story about the two fishermen's catches per day? And which fisherman has the more consistent record? So, in our case, right? Do these present a different story? That's going to be a yes, right? We could clearly see that based on the range. Yes. Since the fisherman have similar Population means and ranges. While having while having different population standard deviation. And which one's more consistent? Well, based upon the values that we got, Ethan is less dispersed. So Ethan is more consistent.
And OK. So that's it for the first part of this unit two review. And I'll see you for part two in a moment. Thank you.